I truly believe everyone here today and all those who are watching by Facebook, website, or the church app, God is getting ready to shake you up. And these are going to be some rhema words. So listen, if you don't mind, go ahead and look at your neighbor <laughs> yeah, and say, it's, it's time to get up out of that grave. Tell somebody, uh, it's time to get up out of that grave. Yeah, y'all, what? It's time, come on, help me, to get up out of that grave. Come on, it's time to live. It's time to get up. It's time to be the church. It's not time to, to sit back and just watch everybody else. It's time. How many of y'all know we're living in the last days? If y'all believe that, you'll do something. Mm. I ain't even got nowhere yet. <laughs> so that brings me to my title. For the next two Sundays, it's going to be titled, Get Up Out of That Grave. Get up out of that grave. Now, I'm getting ready to lay something at y'all's feet. I know you've read it in the Bible, but hopefully I'll bring revelation to this, and it will set you free. Get up out of that grave. Everybody say, get up out of that grave. Everybody else say, get up out of that grave. Get up out of that grave. Y'all, hey, y'all think y'all can make a song with that? Get up out of that grave. Woo, get up out of that grave. Yeah. I, I believe that's a good song title right there. I'm preaching this. I'm preaching the way I want to. Hallelujah. Listen. So if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to Mark chapter 5. Holy Ghost, I surrender to you. Mark chapter 5. I know we've read this a thousand times, but man, I'm telling you. <laughs> here's, here's what, when, how many of you know when you get older, hopefully you get a little wiser? So I was writing this sermon out, and uh, it was a long sermon. I'm talking about if I, if I preached it today, you know, we'd have to eat lunch and supper. But uh, God, it was like, I, I said, I, I'm going to make this part two. And so I want to honor y'all, but I want y'all to listen. Okay, I want you to listen. Mark chapter 5, verse 2 through 9, and I'm going to skip down to verse 15. If you don't have your Bible, we got it on the big screen up here. Watch this. I love y'all. Thank y'all for being lovers of God. Thank y'all for not just being an old Southern Baptist church set on the side of the highway and be, be happy with two salvations and two baptisms a year. Thank y'all for giving hell hell. Thank y'all for plundering hell and populating heaven. Thank y'all for being a good church. Now, I think y'all need to hear that. Y'all are some good people. But watch. Good people are in hell. Mark chapter 5, verse 2 through 9, verse 15. Now, I'm going to go down to verse 15, read down the New King James. The Bible says, not be Ralph. The Bible says, and when he had come out of the boat, immediately, immediately. Everybody say immediately. There met him out of the tombs. A man with an unclean spirit. Whew. Listen, this unclean spirit. Who had his dwelling among the tombs. He, he lived in a graveyard. And no one could bind him. No one could bind him. Not even with chains. Oh, Lord. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been pulled apart by him. He had a devil in him. And the shackles broke Broken into pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And there's a reason why it said no one could tame him. And I'm going to tell you in just a moment. It's going to mess you up. And always night and day. Day and night. He was in the mountains. In the tombs. Crying. Screaming. Cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar. He ran and worshipped him. But Brian, he's a He's a devil. <laughs> I'm going to get to this. And he cried out with a loud voice and he said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. Watch this. The devil said, I implore you by God that you do not torment me. <laughs> For he said to him, listen to me. He, he, talked, he talked to the devil. Because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. How many we say this all the time? We don't wrestle against flesh and blood if they believe they're not your enemy. Watch this. Sometimes you've got to take the devil. Sometimes you've got to look the devil up in his eye and say enough is enough. I ain't playing Sunday school with you no more. I'm not playing vacation Bible school with you no more. I'm not playing Southern Baptist with you no more. I'm not playing good little church with you no more. Satan, I bind you by the authority of God. Come on, church. See, some of you are battling an unclean spirit and you don't even know it. Oh, I come today with authority. Authority. Watch what Jesus says. Come out of the man, you unclean spirit. 
Uh, then he asked him. <laughs> See, here's where people stop. You come out. Jesus said, what's your name? What's your name? How many of you know every demon, every devil has a name? Some of them's name's depression. Some of them's name's sugar diabetes. You say, Brian, not everything. Listen, this is a spiritual world. Spirit, listen, this old fleshly stuff, <laughs> we are wrestling, we are fighting against the spirits, the higher powers, the principalities, the prince of darkness. In Ephesians chapter 6, it's in your Bible. So watch this. What is your name? And the demon talked back. He said, <laughs> now if he did this to some people, he'd be going, oh Lord, this devil talks. Yeah. He said, my name is Legion. My name is Legion. My name is Legion. Legion in your Bible, according to numerology, is 6,000. Woo! He said, not only am I one demon. He said, I've got 5,999 more brothers in with me. See, some of you think you're battling just one devil. But if you've got a legion, I'm going deep. I, I'm so tired. We ain't playing patty cake no more. We're we going we to go church today. We're going to go church. He said, my name is Legion. And watch. He said, for we are many. We are many. 6,000 many. Then, they, then they, they, they came to Jesus and saw one who had been demon possessed. Demon possessed. And had, and had the legion. Watch what happened after you met Jesus. Sitting and, and clothed in his right mind. And all of a sudden, the saved people were afraid. So this man, y'all listen to me. I'm not going to keep you long, I hope not. This man was living in a graveyard. Y'all understand, he was living in a graveyard. He wasn't just living in a graveyard. This is your Bible. This is what a devil will make you do. A devil will make you lose your mind. A devil will make you scream. A devil will make you cry. A devil will make you take a rock or a razor blade and cut your arm. I'm going to, listen, I'm, I'm telling y'all, this is going to go deep. And this, here's, what, here's what messed me up, Jimmy, is I was reading this. That devil didn't want to be in the graveyard. That he didn't want to be there. You know how I know? When he seen Jesus, somebody that could set him free. He stopped the shouting. He stopped the crying. He laid the rocks down that used to cut himself. I feel the Holy Ghost. And he said, I see somebody not only can ride in a boat, but walk on water. I see somebody in my heart and in my spirit that if I get to him, I know I can be set free. And I bind every devil, every demon, every spirit of suicide, every depression, every diabetic, everything that's going on in your life. I bind it by the authority of God. I need y'all to believe me today. I need y'all to believe me today. Why they shout. Here, here's this. I feel the Holy Ghost. You know why people are shouting? Because they know what it's like to fight in the spirit. If you truly are living your salvation... And you never have a battle. You never go through the wilderness. You never hit a low spot. You don't have to battle depression. The devil got you right where he wants you. But I know. I know what it's like to fight depression. I know what it's like to fight suicide. I know what it's like to talk to people who's messed up and been in the wilderness. And, and I know what it's like. So listen, don't tell me to shut up and sit down. I'm telling you as a man of God in front of y'all today, God in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. He wants to set this side free, this side free, that side free, and this side free. Come out of that grave. Everybody say, come out of that grave. No, I'll say, come out of that grave. Come out of that grave. Come out of the grave. Let me, let me mess y'all up. This, 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 this man living in the graveyard, screaming, cutting himself, shouting, Y'all know he was raised up in the temple? I'm going to mess y'all up. He was raised up in church. Some of you, I felt the Holy Ghost speak to me Friday at 1010. Everybody say 1010. I write this stuff down because when God speaks, it's important. At 1010 Friday, God says, you're going to be speaking to some people 
who has had children that was raised in church. They've been, they've been at the temple. And all of a sudden, I feel the, I'm, I'm trying to behave, Holy Ghost. That you, here you are as a mom, as a daddy, as a grandparent. You know that you raised them right. You know that they heard the, the gospel singing. You know that they heard a word of God. You know that they've been in the presence of God. They was raised up in the temple. But now, but now they are far from God. They're living in a graveyard. So my question to you, how does a church kid go from the church house to the graveyard? Oh, I feel the Lord. I don't know what y'all feel, but it's tightened right up here. How does a, a young man who used to sing the Psalms of David, who used to go to Psalms and, and do the Psalms in the Bible. See, those were songs. Psalms were songs. David was a, a true worship leader. Matter of fact, he didn't have to have a crowd. He just had to have sheep. And isn't it funny? God says, now you are my sheep. So it's funny that when worship goes, I'm preaching better than y'all acting. When worship is going on, the sheep should, should attend. Those who have an ear, let them hear what the Spirit of God is saying. So some of you are, in, your, your children are not sitting beside you. Some of you, you've raised your kids right. You know you, you're full of the Holy Spirit. And things, how does a church kid who was raised in the temple go from the temple to the graveyard? Y'all listen, this is some good stuff. This is just part one. This is just part one. So I want y'all to listen to How did that happen? How did that happen? Now, I want y'all to lean in, and I want y'all to listen to me very, very, very close. Listen. Demons, devils, Satan, demonic oppression, listen, and evil spirits are real. Like, look, they're real. They're real. And some of you don't know how to fight. Some of you don't know how to fight. In this world that we live in right now, right now, why is the world the way it is? I'm, listen, I'm not a real smart guy, but here's what I know. If you open the door, the devil will come in. Yeah. If, you, if you open up the door, he'll, he'll, he'll come in. So how did the boy who was raised in church get to the graveyard? I'm going to mess y'all. Listen, this is not even a point, but this is what God's speaking to me right now. And I'm going to be obedient. The church drove him to the graveyard. If he was raised in church, I know y'all don't like this. Whew. God created us. If the Holy Spirit lives in us, we've got love in us. Y'all lean in. You better quit hating on people. You better love the drug addict. You better love the homosexual. The church, if we're not careful... We will drive them from the church house to the graveyard. You will, I know, y'all look at me sideways. That's okay. Because I'm telling you, if you read your commentaries and you do a correct study on this, he went from the temple, the church house, to the graveyard. How? Where was the church? Where was the church? The church was on the sidelines. Look at him. There he goes again. Look at him. Oop, there they messed up again. Why don't you quit fussing? And why don't you get in the trenches? Why don't you go down and say, how can I help you out of the valley? How can I help you anyway? How can I bless you today? How, how can I pray for you today? Hey, how can I, what can I do for you today? Instead of talking about them, pray with them. Come on, Elkhorn. I'm talking to a Holy Ghost Spirit-filled church. We know better. And your flesh is going to rise up and you're going to try to judge. Look, watch. Can I be honest? Happens to me. Happens to your pastor. It is so much easier. It is so much easier to look at somebody and just judge. Judge. You don't know what they're going through. You know what I thought about making y'all do? <laughs> this is crazy. I may still. No. I thought about you guys taking off your shoes. And giving it to the person sitting beside you. And tell them that person to put your shoes on. Because you know why it won't work? You hadn't walked a mile in their shoes. I'm not going to go to the word. Y'all give God praise right there. 
Y'all, it's just the way it is. Listen, until you put b Raph's shoes on, you don't know where b Raph been. You don't know what divorce feels like. You don't know what drug addiction feels like. You don't know what alcoholism. You don't know. It's easier to judge than it is to get in the valley with them. Am I at the right church? That ain't, that ain't even a point. I mean, it may be a, a four-part sermon series. Demons are real. Demons are real. Pos- demon possession's real. And you can't go up to somebody and say, hey, demon, you want to go to church? Because if he comes to church, he's going to cause some hell. Listen, I, I've been in ministry for 24 years. And just because they wear a suit, carry a Bible, and teach Sunday school does not mean that they know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. What if I told you the first point was the church, the church drove this young man to the graveyard? It did. I've been church hurt. But you know what? I finally have come to the conclusion. This set, I hope it sets all of us free. I love y'all. How many of you know B-Raph loves you? But I'm not here for you. Y'all know why I'm here? Because God called me here. Y'all know why I worship here? Because I know that God lives here. And man, when you get in God's house and you get in his presence, how many of you know it's hard to act like a devil? It's hard to act like a devil. So what is a demon? <laughs> what, where do demons come from? Yeah, it's real. Bring, bring it up here. It's real. It's real. He knows. He knows. What's your excuse? Where did demons come from? Y'all ready? Here it is. I'm, I'm, I'm going to educate y'all a little bit. They were, they're fallen angels. Do you remember in Revelation when, a, when Satan, uh, he didn't, he, matter of fact, his, his name in heaven was Lucifer. He didn't become Satan until he fell from heaven. Here's what he's saying. If you fall from God, you're going to have a name change. Just like Saul. Saul got in the presence of God. He went from a Saul to a Paul. You, either way, you look at either way you look at it, you're going to have a name change. Either you're in Satan's army or you're in God's army. Bottom line. So, listen, these demons I'm talking about was a third of the angels that fell from heaven. And watch this, you ready? I'm going to mess you up. They're not in hell. These are not the bad boys that's in hell that's chained down. We're going to do a revelation study starting in August, and y'all need to come. These bad boys are still walking on earth today. These bad boys have, have better church attendance than a lot of Christians do. These bad boys are some bad, 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 bad boys. They come to tempt and to test and torment, and they try to destroy. Watch. Not, the, not you. Watch. I'm going to help y'all because we get this. They try to destroy the works of God through you. That'll help somebody. Because we've made church and we've made worship. We've made preaching. We've made church. Everything about us. Say, watch. If Satan can stop Jesus working through you, he got you, Jimmy. It's not you. It's the God that's working through you. He's after God. Because he knows if he can slow down the process of heaven. If he can slow down God's people. If he can just say, Elkhorn, y'all just be a good little church. Y'all just be satisfied with two salvations and two baptisms. And just put a little check mark beside your name. Everything's good. Chew the back, chew the back, spit. But that's, listen, I'm telling you what he wants to stop. He wants to stop the kingdom working through you. If you are a soul winner. And you are impacting heaven. He hates your guts. But if you're just a Christian that I'll do what I want to do. And I'll I'll talk the way I want to talk. And I'll come to church if I want to come to church. And he ain't worried about you. He ain't worried about you. He ain't worried about you. He's concerned. His assignment is to stop the work and the activity of God. Y'all got me? So listen. Demons, their assignment is to test you. And I, I wrote this down. To torment you. What? So they can control you. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. They tempt you. They test you. There is nothing wrong in temptation. Jesus Christ was tempted. Where it becomes a sin is when you fall into the temptation. I'm tempted every day. And I just got back off vacation. 
And listen, my, I, I'm telling y'all, look at me. You have them little 13-year-old girls that was wearing dental floss? Yeah. And y'all look. <laughs> you got to be honest to be set free. So there was times Willie, I had to get up from the, from the ocean and walk back to the room. I had to, you got to do it too, don't you? Say, he's, he's a man. He has to. Most men sitting there going, oh, got that prop. Oh, are you a man? <laughs> I mean, never mind, that wasn't in my notes. I'll get that for free. Yeah. So he's trying to destroy the, the demon's assignment is to test you to, so he can control you. Watch. And once he controls you, he'll drive you to a graveyard, I'm telling you, until he destroys you. And little by little, little by little, y'all watch. Most sin don't just like happen. You talk to an alcoholic, it started with one beer. You start with a porn addict, it started with one video. Are y'all okay? Because this is some, this is some, this is hit them high, hit them low, but it's all right. We're all going to go. You know what I'm saying? So listen, there's a lie that I want, I want to hit really quick. And, and I, I, how many of y'all have heard this thing that it says, and this, this is a true saying, that Satan will take you farther than you want to go. He'll make you stay longer than you want to stay. He'll make you pay more than you want to pay. That's a true, that's true, that's true. But I, I want to tell you something. Here's the lie I want to destroy. Satan cannot just walk up in this church, walk up into your home, walk up into your life, and make you do anything he wants to do. He cannot do that. Mark, he cannot do that. The only thing Satan can have is what you say or what you give him. So if Satan walks up in this church, we have allowed evil to walk in. Oh, y'all got me. Somebody, is, that, is this all right? It's truth. Satan can only have what we speak. Life and death lies within the power of a, the tongue. If you, if you speak death, if you're cruel, if you're mean, if you got a bad spirit in you, that's devil talk. Y'all want God talk? Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control. Self-control. Did I say self-control? Self-control. So the devil can't make you do anything that you don't want to do. The reason why you're cheating on your wife is because you... <laughs> and Brendan said, happy birthday. I love that. Are y'all ready for preaching or are you ready for vacation Bible school? Because listen, we're going to hit some areas. I'm going to, I'm going to show you biblically. How a church kid who was raised up in the temple, in the presence of God, who sung the Psalms, who experienced God, heard the preaching and the teaching, went from the church house to the graveyard. The church, number one, drove him to the graveyard. But watch this, man. Satan cannot have anything that you do not give him. You cannot. How do you know that this demon-possessed man... I wrote this down in my notes. Brian, how, I wrote it. how do you know that this demon-possessed man did not want to live in a graveyard? I told you because he stopped shouting. He stopped crying. He stopped cutting himself when he seen Jesus Christ. Y'all know how I know you haven't gone too far? Listen, this is so simple. When you look at somebody and they say, man, I messed up. I'm sorry. I shouldn't have done that. I knew drinking that one beer would take me too far. But man, I was tempted and I was tested and I was tried. And I fell into the devil's schemes. And man, it took me farther than I wanted to go. You can work with that one. You know how I know that all of you, watch me, right now have not gone too far? You're here. You're here. You may not want to be here in the flesh, but something inside of you said it's praise the Lord time. It's coming to church time. I know my flesh don't want me to go. I know I've hit the alarm clock 500,000 times. I know really, man, I walked in all gloom and doom. But something inside of you just rises up and says, I, I'm going to serve God today. I'm going to worship him. I'm going to praise him. I'm going to do all that I can. I'm not going to let a drink outshout me. Woo! I worked hard on this. Listen, you're here today. 
But there's something that I want to show you. He just didn't run to Jesus. He fell at the feet of Jesus. Y'all know what that means in the Bible? He surrendered. How many times do you have to surrender? Every day. It was just every day. Every day. I wish. No, I really don't because I've learned over the years. My daily surrender helps me stay close to the presence of God and at his feet. If all I had to say, God, I messed up, I'm going to, there's no conviction. How do you know you hadn't went too far? Do you, do you feel the Holy Ghost? Can you be mean and like it? Do you like making people cry and say, <laughs> I made them cry. Come on. How do, you, how do you know you've not went too far? The first sign is this. You felt something. You felt something. Man, I shouldn't do this. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm going to wrap this up. I felt something. I'm telling y'all the day that my life truly changed. Yeah, I was saved and I was born again. I was on my way to heaven. Matter of fact, I was a pastor. That don't mean I was saved. I knew Jesus. I knew Jesus when I was seven years old. But August the 8th, 2010. I tell y'all this all the time. Because it's that day, I can take y'all to the piece of tile over in the worship activity center, the tile I was standing on. And I was preaching a sermon. If you can't praise him on the mountain, you'll never praise him in the valley. I'll never forget that. How many of you know you'll never forget spiritual things? Listen, that's a good word. You'll never forget spiritual things. You'll ne- My granny has said some things. She said some things I, don't, I didn't understand. Or I, still, I forgot. But there's some things that granny told me in my life. <laughs> Stuck in me. August the 8th, 2010. When I, listen, when I got touched by the Lord for the second time. When I got baptized in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling y'all, y'all could, listen, this is, this is my story. I will stand before God and give an account on everything that comes out of my mouth. I am willing to stand before God and give an account on what's proceeding out of my mouth right now. The greatest day. One of the greatest days in my life is the second wind. The second fire. The second touch. I wouldn't take, you know why? Listen, you know why? The fruit became evident. I loved everybody. I don't even know you, some of you. Watch this, I love you. The grass had a color. The wind felt good. The birds just wasn't chirping. They had a song. And watch this, I'm telling y'all, the birds are not just chirping, they're giving God praise. I'm just telling y'all, it'll change your life. Well, he then went Pentecostal. That's your problem. You're more concerned about a denomination than you are a deliverer. I'm telling y'all today, 100%, God wants to set you free. Come out of that graveyard. Come out of that grave. Get away from those things that are putting you back in a sit. I feel the Holy Ghost. Putting you back. Putting you back. Putting you back. Putting you back. He's going to put you back. The devil will until he can control you and dominate you and destroy you. Y'all with me, Sam? I'm with you. So maybe it was a, maybe I thought about this story. I, I like to put myself, if I, how many of y'all have ever, backslidden come on if your hands not up you just backslid how many of y'all you went twice no, I, i'm one i can't count how many times b ref has went back but thank god i had somebody come across the ocean on a boat Thank God I had somebody that says, you know what? The church may leave you. People may leave you. Family may leave you. But I know a name above all other names. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. He's on time. Every single time. He'll pull you out of the ditch. He'll send you up. He'll shout you up. He'll pray you up until he takes you up. Somebody give him a good praise in here today. Amen. Yes. Hallelujah. He loves you. God does not want his children living in a graveyard. Be easy on people. Be easy on them. Students, y'all want to change the school system? This means yes. This means no. Love them. Love is the greatest gift. Jeff Muncy, I see. Oh, oh, yeah. 
Y'all want to see love? Y'all want to see heaven? Follow Jeff Muncie. <laughs> You're looking at a man who got, who was out of church for how many years, Jeff? 20 some years, is that right? He's not going to tell nobody. All of his life. And I remember going to your house that Saturday. There's a puddle of tears under your cheeks, under your face. And then you was tore up. And you said, Brian, God touched me. And Jeff, you've never been the same. And if y'all get around him, you're going to get picked up. You're going to get squeezed up. And you may even get kissed up right there. I don't know. But all I know is this. How do I know that Jeff Muncy knows Jesus Christ? Because love follows him everywhere he goes. Maybe this man, I thought about this. Maybe this man, pray see him, you guys come. Maybe this man had a praying daddy. <laughs> Maybe this man had a fasting mama. Maybe this man, listen to me. Why am I here? Because you may be like that man near the graveyard and something inside of you will just poof, come up on you. Maybe that man was in an old, old-fashioned church service. I don't know what it was, but something in that man... Come up in him. Something got a hold of him. Something got a hold of me. Jimmy, something got a hold of you. Turn to your neighbor and say, something, something got a hold of you. Yeah, come on, tell somebody else, something got a hold of you. You know, when I was lost, I act lost. Something got a hold of me. Something got, I, I changed partners. I used to dance with the devil on Friday. But now I, I, t- I two-step with God on Sunday. Y'all know what I'm talking about? Something got a hold of me. There's something got a hold of you this morning. Let, let me, let me, oh, hallelujah, I'm going to try to, oh, this is so good. It's so good. Sweating, boy. You know when you're working when you're sweating. Y'all ready? Lean in. Lean in. I'm done. I think that's, that's why I got one more. So, we're going to think about this. A demon-possessed man, I feel the Holy Ghost. Hey. A demon-possessed man living in a graveyard. Jimmy, this will make, make a Baptist shout. Shouting. Screaming. The devil had taken him to a place he'd never thought he would be. He was a church kid. And all of a sudden... Jesus shows up. Y'all with me? Say, I'm with you. I'm done. He stopped shouting. He stopped screaming. He, 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 threw, he dropped the rocks. And he ran back to Jesus. So what this tells me, as long as you're still breathing, there's still hope. But Brian, I've done drugs last night. Are you here today? Brian, I, I, had, I, I went back. I relapsed on alcohol. Are you here today? Brian, I've cheated on my wife. I've cheated on my husband. Are you here right now? Woo! Hey! Listen, it's so good, Mary. We'll never forget this. What's your name? He said, my name is Legion. I've got 6,000 demons. 6,000 devils inside of me. And God spoke this to me Friday And it changed my life. 6,000 demons. 6,000 devils. Allison Garrett couldn't stop a demon-possessed man running to Jesus Christ. Y'all didn't hear me. Y'all did not hear me. 6,000 demons. 6,000 devils. Could not stop this man from saying, there's my Jesus. There's my Savior. I got to run to him. Come on, somebody. It's time to run to Jesus. Come on, stand to your feet all over this house. I'm telling you. Woo! Hey! Hey, son of a color city. Yeah, I said it. Hallelujah. You say, Brian, did you just speak in tongues? I ain't talking to you.
6,000 demons. When Jesus Christ, that's what I'm preaching. That's what I'm trying to tell the churches today. It's not about a title. It's not about a position. It's not about a name over a door. It's about Jesus Christ coming in. And when Jesus Christ comes, I feel it. You say, Brian, I've got 5,000 devils inside of me. All it takes is one touch of God and he'll set you free. Set you free. No addiction. I wrote this in my notes. No addict. Watch. No more excuses. Look at me. No more excuses. After today, you sit under the word of God. <laughs> You, we can't say, well, the devil made me do it. No, you allowed the devil to do it. Here's what I'm saying. The addiction of alcohol right now, it can't stop you running to Jesus and falling at his feet. I feel the Holy Ghost. Your past cannot stop you from getting in the presence of God and falling at his feet. Your homosexuality. Look, God loves you. I love the homosexual. Now listen, we got to stand up for what's right and what's wrong. God loves them. But watch. Sin, sin. The common denominator is called Jesus. God will take the homosexual. If you're still breathing. Run, run to God. Right now, look at me. You know where you're at's wrong. You know what you're doing is wrong. You know how I know you're wrong? Because you keep calling me. You say, Brian, I've done this. What? Stop. Stop. Run to Jesus. Fall at his feet. Get healed. Get set free right now in Jesus' name. He wants to do it. He wants to do it. I told y'all be praying for me. Y'all wait till next Sunday. We're not going to talk about how the church drove him to the graveyard. There's three other things I'm going to give y'all that drove him to the graveyard. It's going to shock y'all. So, I want to wrap this up. <laughs> I want to wrap this up. If you don't feel God no more, watch. The devil is trying to control you. The devil just wants to take you away from God little by little. He's not going to come in and shoo, it's the little things. The Bible says it's the little things that spoils the vine. It's the little things in your life. If you don't grab it and get a hold of it, it'll take you to the graveyard. It's the little things. It's the little things. It's the little things. Men of God, if you don't leave your home, I promise you it's the little things. It's the little things. So maybe you don't feel God today. Maybe you feel like you're losing your mind. Maybe you're backslidden. Maybe you're away from God today. Maybe you keep doing the wrong things over and over and over. I got some news for you. Jesus is here. I'm going to ask you guys right now. Wherever you're at, I want you to run to this altar. I want you to run to this altar. I want you to swallow your pride. Because all we are is one beggar telling another beggar where to find the bread. I know a bread maker. I know a water walker. I know a man that can stop the devil right now in Jesus' name. But you got to want it. 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 Hey, you got to want it. 6,000 devils. I can't get over it. 6,000 devils couldn't stop that man getting to Jesus. What's your excuse? Well, Brian, if I go to the front... People know I've got sin in my life. Y'all ready? <laughs> Are you worried about people? Are you worried about making it right with God? Are you worried about a title or position? No. I'm praying for the day y'all drop your instruments. And get the feet of Jesus. Because listen, you can play an instrument all day. Y'all are anointed. My, my question to you is this. What are y'all fighting? What are y'all up against? What's trying to control you? What's trying to put you in a graveyard? 
what's trying to destroy you. When you get like that, and you tell truth, you can run to the feet of Jesus. So, Father God, in Jesus Christ's name, I preach what you told me to preach. Lord, bless these people. May this altar become full. God, may we love each other. May this world see Elkhorn Baptist Church and say, man, those people out there will take me just as I am. But they refuse to leave me just as I am. They want me to get better. They want me to get stronger. I'm not fighting depression no more. I'm not fighting anxiety no more. I'm not fighting people no more. I'm not fighting this world no more. I belong to Jesus. God made this church raise their hands and say, I belong to Jesus. Lord, have your way. Bless them in Jesus' name. Flood this place with your presence, God. Run over in us, God, like the mighty rushing wind. Lord, may you shake us and may we all leave different today in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, amen. Y'all did great today. This altar's open. You come. Let God change. Y'all ready? Let God change you. Let God change your mindset. Let God change your love factor. Let God change this atmosphere today. In Jesus' name. Y'all come. Let God lead.